Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to all those who are watching this on the recording. Welcome to our latest enterprise skills session, where we are going to be joined by Marta Watt, who's going to explain a little bit about startup accounts. These sessions are hopefully useful opportunities for you to develop your enterprise skills, whether you're running a business or not, um, or you're aspiring to run your own venture. So hopefully this will be a chance for you to ask questions, to get some practical tips and uh, to develop your idea as you progress through. So um, without further ado, we'll hand over to Martin and then throughout, if you have questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat or uh, discuss them as we go through. Hi folks, uh, welcome along. Uh, again, just add my welcome to this Enterprise Skills Workshop on uh, startup accounts. Um, as you're someone involved in a startup, you hopefully all have a business idea that you're proud of. Um, you're probably also uh, spending time working out how you're going to raise finance, create a minimum viable product, entice customers to your offering, etc. And therefore, you're probably not lying awake every night wondering about your accounts. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to kind of change that perception for you uh, over the next 45 minutes or so. My name is uh, Martin Watt. I'm, I'm a practicing chartered accountant with my own accountancy firm. Uh, and I also lecture uh, part time at Aberdeen Business School. In the time available, uh, we're not going to be able to cover everything you need to know about uh, what you have to do to produce accounts for your startup business. But by the end of the session, I hope I'm going to be able to give you some food for thought uh, in terms of what, my, what you might need to consider doing going forward. Um, I'm going to kick off just by sticking up uh, a few slides. I think there's about a dozen in total, but we're going to spend most of the session uh, looking at a, a demo version of a set of accounts. Uh, and then hopefully we'll give you the opportunity to, to ask loads of questions uh, as we go through. So I'm going to kick off for the next slide, just covering, uh, just to go through what I'm going to talk about over the next uh, wee while. Uh, we'll kick off just by differentiating between accounting and bookkeeping. Uh, I'm then going to introduce the fundamentals of the accounting equation, which basically defines what accounting is all about. Uh, we're then going to look at what kind of records your startup should be keeping. Uh, and I'll then take you through a very basic checklist that will help you ensure that you keep those records. Uh, we're then going to consider whether or not you do your own bookkeeping or whether you outsource it. And then we'll finish off, uh, as I just said, by looking at some of the online accounting packages that are available uh, and technology permitting. Uh, I'll also be able to give you uh, a demo of one of these packages uh, in operation. Uh, we'll finish off by looking at some of the integrations you can add into uh, the online packages. And as I said on the last slide, this will just be a, a whistle stop tour uh, and I won't cover any of these details in a, a, any of these areas in a huge amount of detail. Uh, what I will say for anyone who registered for this session uh, on Friday or earlier, uh, you will be given access to a trial version of the online accounts package that I'm going to go through. So uh, you'll be able to play around with it and uh, have a look. Uh, and as it, as it was said in the introduction, you are more than welcome to uh, ask any questions as we go along by sticking uh, them in the text box or just asking me uh, at the end. So let's kick off with the... Uh, accounting v bookkeeping. Um, both these are numbers related, but bookkeeping and accounting are not quite the same things. Um, so just a reminder of what each of these are before uh, I go any further with the presentation. Bookkeeping is the process of tracking all financial records, mainly the income and expenditure of your startup. Uh, now the term dates back to the olden days when business owners track finances in paper books, hence the name bookkeeping. Accounting, on the other hand, is the process of interpreting your financial records for everything from making sure you pay the right amount in taxes to making strategic business decisions based on your business numbers. Now, I would say that both bookkeeping and accounting are vital to every business success, uh, but you might have an additional need to keep good records as a startup. So if, for example, you have investors, it may well require you to be producing uh, regular financial reports, tracking against KPIs, etc., and also, if you're a startup trying to get a business loan, you'll need to uh, have easy to read uh, financials so that potential lenders can make an, an informed decision about loaning uh, to your business. Now, what underpins uh, all accounting uh, is the accounting equation. Some of you might be familiar with this. Um, and some of you may well also have heard the term balance sheet when accounts are being referenced. 
Now, the accounting equation on this slide uh, essentially defines what a balance sheet is. Uh, so the accounting equation captures the relationship between the three components on a balance sheet, namely assets, liabilities, uh, and the equity, which is represented by the capital plus the reserves. All else being equal, a company's equity will increase when its assets increase and vice versa. Adding liabilities will decrease uh, equity while reducing liabilities, such as by paying off debt. And we'll see an increase in equity there. So these basic concepts are essential to modern accounting methods. And we're going to give you a quick example over the next few slides how the accounting equation works, because it kind of underpins what we're going to look at uh, a little bit later when we look at the demo. And ultimately, we'll see uh, how we piece together some transactions within your startup. Uh, and then we'll look at the end what the reporting looks like uh, as it comes through the other end. So it's, I think it's fairly important that you try and understand this uh, as early as possible, because it will certainly make it uh, your life a lot easier as you try to understand your startup finances. So we'll just kick off here with um, a very simple transaction uh, where we introduce £10,000 of investment into your startup organisation. So all we've got here is uh, cash at bank becomes £10,000 and that would be equal to the share capital of £10,000. So nice and easy. Uh, and in other words, we can quickly see that the balance sheet balances by using the accounting equation. So let's just add a, a couple more transactions so you get the idea of what we're doing here. Uh, here we're going to buy £5,000 worth of stock to add to our startup business. So in red there, um, you'll see that uh, our assets will remain at £10,000 and the capital will also remain at £10,000 difference in red is that we've replaced £5,000 in the bank account with £5,000 worth of stock. So it's £10,000 on each side still. And lastly, just to give you an idea um, how this works at a very basic level, we're not going to sell some of this stock and we're going to sell £2,000 worth of it for £5,000, meaning that we've made a £3,000 profit. Our asset total now becomes £13,000 uh, and it comprises of uh, cash at bank of £5,000, <coughs> excuse me, stock of £3,000 and debtors of £5,000 being the money owed to us by a customer who we've sold to on credit. Our capital remains at £10,000 but we add on the £3,000 profit that we've made on the sale which means that the other side of the accounting equation all therefore balances up at £13,000. Now, this is a very quick example, uh, hopefully just to give you an idea of what you're looking at when you're doing your own bookkeeping. Uh, and as I said, with a view to producing your startup's own accounts. Uh, and we'll see that in action a little bit later on. <coughs> so now that we understand what we're trying to track uh, by keeping accounts for our startup, uh, your business is now rolling along and you're starting to accumulate a mixture of hard copy and digital records. Uh, in the United Kingdom, you're required to keep your uh, business records for at least four years in the event the HMRC open an inquiry into your tax submissions. Uh, and with this in mind, it's usually best to err on the side of caution uh, and keep pretty much anything and everything. So that's the short answer. <coughs> keep everything. However, as a minimum, uh, and as it states in the longer answer there, uh, you're going to be keeping copies of receipts, bank and credit card statements, bills, invoices, payroll records, tax correspondence, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're going to see uh, a little bit later that this need not be too onerous an exercise as much of your startup accounting uh, requirements can be digitized using the one, one of the widely available online accounting packages. So uh, let's, uh, before we look at that, let's have a little look at what ongoing tasks you might need to schedule in for your startup. Excuse me a second while I just take a little drink of water. So here we have a fairly basic set of checklists that you might want to consider following for your startup, uh, split into weekly and monthly tasks. Uh, again, uh, these tasks ought to be much less onerous than they were a decade or so ago due to the fact that we now have a multitude uh, of online accounting packages that will make some of the tasks on here much easier uh, to handle. Uh, we will look at these tasks again, give them a bit of context when I show you the demo uh, of the online accounting package that we're going to look at in a little minute. <clears throat> so 
As a startup founder, uh, you're going to need to choose early on whether to spend your own valuable time on accounting and bookkeeping tasks or to outsource it to the experts. Now, if you remember from my introduction, uh, I am a practicing accountant with my own accountancy firm. Uh, so it's maybe a little bit biased for me to have put on this slide that you should be contacting an accountant as soon as possible and as often as possible, especially as this usually comes at a cost um, to you guys. However, uh, I believe that this advice is very well founded. It's never too early for a founder to talk to an accountant, even uh, when you choose to do your own weekly and monthly bookkeeping tasks, as we saw on the previous slide. Uh, an accountant can provide valuable guidance on early stage questions such as which expenses can you write off and how can you remunerate yourself tax efficiently. Uh, you're also going to need an accountant on your side for tax time. Business taxes are a little bit more tricky than personal taxes. Uh, an accountant familiar with the type of industry that you work in um, will help you pay the least amount of tax possible and protect you from HMRC inquiry. Uh, as I said, though, accountants will cost you money in terms of fees. So by all means, uh, when your startup is in its early stages uh, and your budget is therefore tight, you might want to consider managing your business's books yourselves. Uh, and as an added benefit of doing this, uh, handling your own finances uh, comes with the benefit that you will allow yourself to truly grasp how money flows in and out of your business. And therefore, uh, you'll probably feel uh, a little bit of confidence in terms of your own financial standing uh, and the ability for you to make uh, decisions based on the records that you've kept for yourself. Okay, so just before I um, switch uh, and move on to the online demo, I'm um, just going to quickly talk about the online accounts uh, packages that are available and also uh, tie that in with some of the integrations. So. Um, I'd say probably about 15 years ago, the world of accountancy and bookkeeping um, changed fundamentally with the advent of uh, some of the widely available online accounting packages. There are packages to suit just about every budget, including some of those shown in this slide. Uh, the four that are up there, Zero, Free Agent, QuickBooks and Sage One, are all what I would call off-the-shelf packages where they will be suitable for most types of businesses uh, in terms of functionality. Larger or more complex businesses might, though, on the other hand, need to consider a more sophisticated system, uh, while gaps in functionality uh, within the off-the-shelf packages uh, can be filled by integrating add-ons to such software. So, for example, mo most of the uh, online accounting packages shown here do not have very good functionality uh, for tracking future outgoings uh, or for reporting some of the KPIs that might be required for investors and lenders. So take, for example, if we're running a copy of Zero to keep our startup accounts on, we can actually integrate that with something like Fathom, uh, one of the integrations mentioned down the bottom, uh, which will enable us to produce beautiful reports uh, and projections basically to satisfy our needs. So I'm not going to go into uh, any of these integrations in great detail, although I will mention um, a couple of integrations that you can use uh, very easily within some of the online packages. Uh, I'm going to finish off now by switching over to a demo version of uh, the free agent software, which is the one that's uh, in the middle there. The reason I've chosen that one is because it's probably one of the most easier to understand packages that are available. Uh, and I'm basically going to walk you through how it works in the context of what I've talked about uh, up until now. Um, now would probably be a good point to ask if there are any questions uh, from what I've talked about up until now, just before I, uh, I switch the screen over uh, and pull up uh, the demo version of Free Agent. So please feel free uh, to ask anything while I switch over for uh, uh, the screen that we're going to be looking at. You must all be eating your lunch, you're all very shy. Okay, 
right, so I'm going to share my screen again, and hopefully you'll be able to see um, a copy of the agent in a second. So hopefully you can all see that. Yep, that's coming through nicely. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to apologize as well in advance, guys. I'm going to keep my video on, but uh, because I'm going to be looking up on the screen up here, it might not look like I'm looking um, at the camera. So uh, we're logged in here into uh, a demo company called that I've called Arachnet. Um, for those of you that watch the series on Netflix, uh, that was a startup. It was called Arachnet, so I've nicked the name from there. Uh, very kind of simple layout. Uh, we've got some tabs along the top um, with an overview, uh, contacts, work, bills, my money, banking, taxes, accounting. So you'll see that there are no complicated um, or confusing uh, accounting jargon phrases in there. Uh, it's all relatively straightforward. So work relates to the work that your business undertakes. My money relates to the money that belongs to the owners of the business, banking is obviously a business banking, um, taxes are the taxes that it pays, and the accounting tab will relate to um, the reporting that we have. So you'll see there that there isn't much information on the screen at the moment, and that's because I haven't really put much data into it. I'm just going to do that as we go through the next um, 20 minutes or so. Uh, but what we have here are uh, a series of tiles. Uh, up at the top, we've got cash flow, uh, no money in or out of our bank account at the moment, so everything is nil. Uh, immediately below that, to the left, um, we can see any invoices that we've raised, any quotes that we've put out, any projects that we've set up, or any time recording um, that we've done. To the right of that, we've got um, a graphical representation of our bank account. And then just in the bottom <laughs> three files, we can also see any expenses uh, that we have claimed for our business and any outstanding bills that were due to pay suppliers. And then this nice little thing down at the very bottom uh, right here with free agent is that it uh, gives us an overview of our income and expenses and it calculates uh, any tax that we've got uh, due to pay as we go along. Uh, and also I just click on this little tab here. Um, Free agent also comes with a little nice functionality that term, tells you when all your taxes are due for payment. So uh, that's PAYE on uh, payroll, VAT on your uh, sales and purchases, corporation tax, and also your excuse me your filing deadlines for your accounts and also your tax returns. Uh, and this can be synced uh, in with your uh, your normal calendar that you use on a day to day basis. So I'm just going to go through the rest of the tabs and quickly show you uh, what's in there. And as we go along, we're going to drop in um, some additional data. So as with most accounting packages, they run off a database uh, of customers and suppliers. Uh, some of the other packages will differentiate between a supplier database and a customer database. Free agent, on the other hand, is nice and simple. It's just one database uh, with all your contacts. And you'll see there that I've added in um, two contacts. We're going to add in a third now. Uh, I'm going to call it little dog. And you'll see that it asks for um, a lot of informa uh, information. We don't need to put too much in. Uh, we'll get away with just that. And it's as simple as that. We've got potentially three customers set up. Um, just go back onto the contacts. You can see the contacts there. Nice and easy, you just click into them uh, and you can do various things as we saw there. So we can potentially add uh, things there, but I'll do that by taking you through the relevant tabs. So on the work tab, um, you may be uh, requested to give a quote for some work, for example. So you can do that by producing an estimate. Um, you might be working on multiple projects, so you can set up multiple projects and code uh, your income and expenses to these projects. Uh, you can also track the time that you spend on individual projects. Uh, and I'm 
mainly concerned here uh, with what we're going to talk about with the invoicing. So I'm just going to show you how easy it is to raise an invoice on these online packages. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll raise um, three invoices to each of the three um, customers. So very basic information comes up. We can choose which one of our three contacts use. We've got an invoice date. So let's make this a little bit earlier in the year. Create a new invoice. So you can see here the template comes up. It has everything um, that we need on it. So it's got a VAT number, it's got a company registration number, and it's got our bank details. Um, so we're just going to add in nice to get £5,000 an hour, but um, you can change that quantity. So it's easy to edit them as well. Change the days, change the weeks. But... So simple as that. Um, if we set our contact up with email addresses, we can hit on send by email. Uh, it'll pull through a template uh, email to include with the invoice attachment. We also get the opportunity to add any supporting documentation if, for example, we're recharging um, expenses. Uh, one of the integrations that Free Agent will cope with nicely is that you can integrate it with the likes of PayPal, Stripe, GoCardless, etc. So when uh, a customer receives this email in their inbox and they click on the link, uh, there'll be a Pay Now button showing up at the top right. So it just makes it nice and easy for um, your customers um, to pay. Of course, that will only uh, be relevant for guys that are working in uh, sectors where that's uh, the, the norm, whereas for quite a lot of you, it's more likely to be just sending out uh, invoices and waiting for the traditional method of payment, which would be via bank transfer. So I don't have an email address for this, so I'm just going to manually mark this one as sent, and you'll see that it changes to that. Uh, I'm now going to just create another two invoices, one for each of the, so you'll see it automatically changes it to invoice two, let's go with that. Sent. you'll see that while I'm uh, typing in this details manually, um, in the back end of this package, you can set up price lists. Uh, so you can have a bunch of things that will just come down in the drop down menu. So it saves you a lot of time. Um, one thing I didn't mention as well is that for all the online packages, not just free agent, uh, all of them have apps. So you can uh, access them from anywhere, either on your phone or on your tablet. It doesn't have to be on a, a web-based desktop. Um, and when we look at some of the bank transactions in a little while, uh, you'll see the benefit of the functionality of that. So, for example, if you're out and about and you're meeting a potential customer and you've had to pay for, uh, example, car parking or uh, a coffee while you've been out and about, uh, all that you do is you open up the app uh, and you take a snap of your receipt and it'll go directly into the software. So it's recording transactions. Uh, they are nice and nice and easy for you. So what we've done now is we've created three invoices. They're all going to be showing as outstanding because, oops, I did not click hit send for that one. So just bear with me a second. So we've now raised three invoices, uh, all for £5,000 VAT. Um, 
and all are currently showing is overdue because I don't have any bank transactions and yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, bills, I'm not going to show you bills. It's actually just the opposite of sales. So it's basically anything that you buy on credit uh, where you're going to pay for that uh, outgoing a little bit later. So if you uh, acquire something and you're not required to pay the invoice for another 30 days, you would add it on as a bill. Same process, set it up as a contact uh, and drop in a, a, a bill. Uh, you've got the opportunity to attach uh, a copy of um, the invoice or receipt or if you're within free agent using your phone or your tablet you can take a photograph uh, of the document that way so over to my money uh, my money is where uh, we are going to input any expenses so an expense is anything that you have uh, paid for personally and you wish to claim back from your business. So the examples I gave there a minute ago were, uh, for example, coffee uh, or car parking. Uh, and within my money, we also keep track of your remuneration. So your remuneration, uh, this, this demo company is set up as a limited company. So the remuneration will typically be uh, for the business owner, uh, be via dividends uh, and also uh, salary amount. So I think I should already have set up um, a payroll here. Uh, for our founder, who's called Nick. And we're going to run a payroll for Nick for uh, month one, which is basically April 21. Uh, and we're going to pay him a net salary of 792. So fairly straightforward. Payroll's done in here. We'd have it linked normally with HMRC. Uh, but because this is a demo company, I'm not going to report it to anyone. Let me just run it. And just click through and there you have it just looks like any other pay slip would look like so everything's in there uh, all the reporting uh, is done very easily to hmrc and therefore any kind of compliance matters are taken care of the other thing we've got in here that i'll just quickly show you our expenses so i've claimed uh, already put in a claim uh, for nick in respect of uh, hotels uh, where we've claimed back uh, 100 pounds and i'll show you how how that is relevant uh, when we go into look at banking which will be just now so i've already actually let's let's go back and i'll just explain what that meant so all of the online accounts packages uh, that are available today um pretty much comply with the open banking standard uh, which means that banks have agreed to share uh, data with other applications uh, from the online banking. So all, all online accounts packages will pretty much be able to sync with your business online internet banking. And what that basically means is that uh, if you click the green button here, it'll connect to your internet banking and it'll suck through transactions on a daily basis. Uh, and that, in my opinion, it kind of forms the cornerstone of what all these online accounts are about because your, your bank account pretty much Will reconcile all the time because it's uh, an automated process so it's probably the most important integration because this is a demo though it doesn't have um, a bank account set up so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to manually go in to view the bank account internet pending ah, <coughs> excuse me and then you'll see here um there are no transactions but what i'm going to do uh, in the absence of a direct feed is I'm hopefully going to uh, upload just a CSV file just to show you what it looks like when um, some transactions come through. I might play around with this, so just bear with me a second. Sometimes the formatting can be a little bit off. Nope, we managed to do it correctly. So. Okay, so when the transactions come through, um, let's say we had the bank feed enabled. This applies for uh, any of the online accounts packages, not just free agent. Uh, they'll all come through, uh, and free agent works on a traffic light um, basis where red transactions you're required to categorize them. So if you remember what I said in one of the earlier slides, uh, one of the monthly tasks for you would be to categorize your income and expenses. So Anything in red requires you to categorize it. Anything in green 
Um, there's a little bit of artificial intelligence involved in the back end of these systems where it's guessing what your transactions relate to and it's turned the transaction green. Uh, you always have to review them. In this case, both of those appear to be correct because I know that I, the first invoice I put out was to Middle Dog and it was for £5,000 VAT. So it's taken the £6,000 receipt and it's allocated it against that receipt. Likewise, I have uh, paid out £750 of accountancy fees and because of the description that's on the bank statement, um, it knows that that's accountancy. So what we're going to do here is uh, we'll just explain the other transactions. So we we'll, might as well start off at the top. So So £10,000 share capital received from Nick. Simple as that, it's going to change it to green. We've purchased some stock here. It's just using drop down menus. Very similar with all the other online accounts packages. It's as simple as this. Uh, we've paid out some money for heat and light. We've paid out some wages. And then we've also reimbursed Nick for um, the expenses that he's incurred. I've forgotten I've put through two um, salary payments. I'm just going to pop back onto payroll. I'm going to run another month's worth of payroll. Just bear with me one second. Okay, so if we go to the salaries, um, this is a salary control account. So we basically um, here. We've given Nick a payslip for 792 in April, and we've also given him a payslip for 792 in May. Two transactions through the bank account, 792 and 792, which shows that we've squared everything off. Likewise with the expenses, expense claim here for 100 pounds, and we've reimbursed Nick 100 pounds, so he's not due anything um, back. So that, that's basically the gist uh, of how all the online accounting packages work. Um, in here as well, uh, we can also get an idea of any PAYE, PAT, and corporation tax, and also for director self-assessment. So for example, if I click on the corporation tax, it's automatically calculating uh, based on the transactions, there'll be a limited number of transactions and that we've got a corporation tax liability of £1,602.46. And if I remind you, if I go back to the overview screen, down at the bottom right here, that same amount should appear there, because based on the transactions that I've put in, uh, we've generated a profit of um, 8434 Because it's VAT registered as well, it'll pull through transactions. I'll just quickly show you that. So this is a March 21 VAT return, uh, where it's pulling through VAT due on sales and also any VAT reclaimed on inputs. Click on there. <coughs> we'll see uh, all the de de details that fall in behind there. Uh, so if I click on that, for example, it'll take me uh, hopefully straight to the invoice that I raised a little bit earlier. And then it's just a case of um, filing it. Can't do it just now because uh, it's a demo company and I therefore don't have it registered with HMRC. So on to the, the final bit then. Um, I'm just going to quickly look at some of the reports that you can pull off, uh, bearing in mind what I said at the outset, where you're going to be concerned with uh, what your business is doing. That's the, that's the ultimate aim of uh, keeping your accounts so that you can see how your business is doing so that you can report milestones to 
uh, investors or lenders and also to help you with um, any kind of business decisions that you're going to make. So, so fairly straightforward um, reports here at a high level. So we'll look at the profit and loss first. Um, what we can do here is we can play around with how this is laid out <coughs> at the moment. This is just showing year to date. So our three sales invoices exclusive of VAT come to 15,000 and then we've put through some costs against that to get back to 8434. And again, we'll see the 1603 uh, of tax there. We can set that out uh, on a monthly report. So it's just play around with the way that it's reported. And had we had transactions in the previous year, we could also have comparative figures in there. A quick look at the balance sheet. So the balance sheet, remember, is your accounting equation. So remember, the accounting equation is the assets minus the liabilities to give us the total net assets of 16832. Uh, and the other side of the accounting equation is the capital plus um, the profit and loss that, that we've uh, made during the year and indeed in any previous years. So it's 10,000 plus the 6832, and we can see there that it balances uh, very very nicely. The other report that might be of use to you um, could be, for example, the age debtor. So there was one invoice that wasn't paid. Uh, we can see it here that uh, it's showing as outstanding. All the accounts packages that are available online off the shelf as well, um, you can set up automated credit control. So if a customer hasn't paid you, um, you can automatically set, uh, set the software so it sends a reminder maybe a week after it was due for payment. Uh, and then you can send a little bit more kind of heavy handed reminder a few days after that, if you so wish, before you need to manually intervene and um, start chasing them a little bit more actively. Guys, that is um, pretty much it in terms of the free agent software. Uh, as I said, it's probably one of the easier ones um, to understand in terms of taking care of uh, your startup accounts. Uh, all of them pretty much do the same uh, thing and pretty much all of them will have a plethora uh, of integration. So if you're running a, uh, a business that's got some kind of specialization, the likelihood is that there is, a, there is going to be an app or an integration that will um, be able to work with it uh, and also be probably fairly easy for you to, to, to set up and get up and running with. So guys, that, that's us with about kind of five, 10 minutes left. I'm more than happy uh, to take any questions from you. So um, just uh, open the floor. Feel free to put them in the text box or uh, if you're brave enough, stick your camera on and your microphone on uh, and ask me face to face and we'll take it from there. I guess perhaps while people are starting, I'll say thank you, Martin. I guess a question for me is, what is an area that you would say that startups or new businesses go the most wrong when they're doing this? What do they get the most stuck on in terms of these different activities and how should they get past it? Uh, it's probably from my own experience, because I, within my own firm, I do a lot of work with startups, uh, new ventures, uh, particularly in terms of ones that are uh, attempting to raise finance for um capital intensive projects and i think probably the area that is probably the most difficult for them is getting to terms with uh, the reporting that has to be done to investors uh, and i guess we can draw that back to what i've said we're looking at basically the way that we categorize costs so in my opinion um using one of the online packages is probably the easiest way to to make sure that your your categorization is a little bit more uh, robust. Uh, you maybe can't remember the, the slides, but one of the integrations that I did stick up, but I didn't mention was something called Dext. Uh, Dext is a little add-on to uh, your online accounts where it will constantly monitor the health uh, of the explanations that you've given. So for example, if there's a recurring amount for accountancy going through the bank account of £200 per month, but I've categorised it differently every month, um, that Dext add-on will will pop an email uh, to tell me that I've done it incorrectly and I'll ask if I want to change the description, for example, so it's all consistent. So you just kind of automate some of the stuff. 
that you're able to report back to uh, your investors and, and indeed uh, lenders because uh, increasingly now uh, a lender will put in a covenant that you've got to produce a set of management accounts for example and if you're able to do that cost effectively um, the way to do it is via uh, using one of the online packages and as long as you've had adequate training on it uh, you ought to be able to uh, do what the bank uh, or the lender or the investor need you to do. Great. And how about returns to companies' house if you register the companies? What do startups need to be aware of about the financial information they need to provide, not including taxes and those types of things? <coughs> so um, you'll see here that we've actually got the opportunity to produce final accounts um, in here. I'm not sure if I've set so basically, we've got the basic information uh, in here. In terms of a limited company, uh, we've got a set of financial accounts here for the year ended 31st December 2021. Uh, they're required to be filed at company's house by the 30th September um, 2022. You can actually um, file these accounts uh, directly from free agent. However, I probably wouldn't recommend uh, doing that without first having an, an external accountant and have a look over them just to make sure that uh, you've categorised everything correctly in mind of what I've just said uh, a little minute ago. In terms of the taxes, although you didn't specifically ask about the tax there, uh, I'll cover it as well. Um, rather oddly, uh, a tax return doesn't have to be filed until 12 months after your year end, so it'll be the 31st of December 2022. However, the tax has to be paid nine months after. So try and figure that one out uh, if you can. The, the logic of uh, our good old HM Revenue and Customs, you've got to pay your tax three months before you've got to submit your tax return. Um, other compliance matters that a limited company has to worry about. Uh, one other thing would be the annual confirmation statement, uh, which is really just a, a fairly basic document that uh, requires you to, to state who the company directors are, who the registered office is, who the shareholders are, and who's in ultimate control of the company. Uh, the reason I've mentioned that is, again, because of uh, my background with uh, working with startup companies who are raising money for capital-intensive projects. So they'll be bringing on uh, fairly sizable, so in some cases, some sizable numbers of shareholders. Uh, and that's where all that information gets captured on the public record. Thank you so much. So a few questions in the chat now. So um, Lindsay and Juliet have asked about the, the price of these different softwares and if there's free versions and how you might access them. Okay, so these are, all of these are off the shelf, as I said. Um, there isn't a huge differential between um, the pricing. Uh, you will get kind of real basic starter versions that will cost maybe £10 plus VAT per month. But I would say on average, for your average uh, business that's got a kind of broad range of, uh, so, you, so you need to be able to invoice, you want to be able to run a payroll, you want to be able to claim expenses, you want to be able to link in your bank account. I would say in the region of 30 to 40 pounds per month would be a kind of average monthly subscription that you need to pay uh, to be able to access um, one of these packages. Uh, Usually, though, going direct to the likes of Xero, uh, Free Agent, QuickBooks, and Sage will ordinarily mean that you end up paying more. It's probably best to look for a, an accredited partner uh, who will be buying the licenses significantly cheaper than uh, what you'd be able to, to, to buy them direct for. And usually, they'll pass on that cost saving to uh, the end client. All of them will also uh, offer um, a free trial version. Um, as I said at the start, I will, for everyone that's on the list that I've been sent, I, I know that there were eventually 28 people registered for this, but I've only got 26 on my um, list. So I'll, I'll set up a, an invitation for you guys to set up, a, to, to access a trial um, company. And because we're, my firm is a platinum accredited partner, uh, I could probably keep that open for a little bit longer than the month that you would normally get for free uh, via by a free agent itself. And likewise, you can look at the other packages. Uh, I really like Zero, for example. Uh, they'll give you a month subscription as well, but it's a little bit more uh, difficult to get to grips with. I chose free agent because it's probably the easiest one for anyone to understand. 
Great. And another question from Boon Yen is looking to do a business on social media. And um, what uh, would you say, uh, I guess, what size of business would you recommend having the records you've shown? Is there a limit to, you know, what size you should be when you have to start looking at these more complex things? Can you be really small and still require this type of information? Um, so so I, I think I think I maybe answered that when I, well, I hope I answered it <laughs> when I when I pulled up the slide. Um, in terms of size, yeah, your business, when it's really small, your budgets are going to be tight. So it just purely comes down to a decision, whether or not you think that you can afford uh, two things, whether or not you can afford the time to look after your own records on a manual basis, so via a spreadsheet, for example, or uh, also if you can uh, afford the subscription fee. That, that, that's really what it comes down to. Personally, I would probably go with the software from day one, just because it standardizes everything. Uh, and it means that you're not having to uh, play catch up with a kind of hybrid scenario in your first year where you've run some manual records and then you set up a, a, an online package a little bit later on. So in terms of kind of what you do when you set up, you, you kind of factor that cost into your, to your budget that you're potentially going to have to pay um, a subscription fee to run your accounts on uh, and then compare that against the time that you would take to set up a, a spreadsheet uh, and actually maintain it on a uh, an ongoing basis the time that it takes because the online software will if used properly um, will take care of pretty much everything in a fraction of the time uh, that you would need to take if you were doing it yourself or outsourcing some of it Fantastic. Thank you so much. Any final questions for those on the webinar today? Uh, a question, can you use this software outside of the UK? So all, of all of the online providers that I put up on the screen will have local variants. Uh, Gabriel, I can't specifically state if the likes of Free Agent offer a, a Nigerian version, but I know that um, free agent will have what's called a universal license. So it'll do absolutely everything that I took you through here today, but it won't automatically calculate the taxes. So you'll be able to use a package like this uh, to do all the basics, but it won't calculate the tax. Uh, I know that free agent have versions that are available in the US, uh, in the UK. I know that Zero have versions that are uh, relevant in Australia, uh, the USA, etc. Uh, and I'd imagine uh, the longer uh, that these companies are offering their services, the more kind of uh, countries that will be uh, readily available in terms of the tax computations. Fantastic. And then Juliet was asking, um, will the packages help train you or do you have to learn it yourself when you sign up for them? Okay. Um, so I'll use free agent again as the example because it has uh, an excellent uh, knowledge database. I'm just going to scroll down here. Hopefully it'll take me to um, what we need to do. So I'll click on this first one, getting started. It'll hopefully come up with a bunch of links. I'll just click on any of them. Um, it's fairly straightforward. There are videos somewhere, but I can't remember where to find them. So normally if I set up a new uh, client, for example, on free agent, I will send them uh, a one page document with links to a bunch of videos uh, to get the basics set up. And then we would uh, schedule in probably 20 to 30 minutes um, to actually go through what I did there with you guys uh, just a little while ago, just to show you everything to make sure that you've not uh, missed out on anything. One of the other advantages of working with an accountant is that the accountant can also have, be granted access to these online packages. And if they have access to it, uh, what we normally do is we normally set you off running uh, with uh, operating it yourself, but we will log in at least once every uh, month uh, at the beginning just to make sure that you're comfortable with it. And then if you're uh, submitting VAT returns, we'll automatically be on it. Uh, every three months, just making sure that everything is tidy. One thing I would say about, uh, especially free agent, because it is the, the easiest one to get to grips with, my 
my mum is actually 73 years old uh, and she does the accounting for a little craft business that my sister uh, runs and I can assure you if my mum can operate the likes of free agent uh, I'm pretty sure any of you guys will be able to do so as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Martin. Thanks for everyone who joined and thanks for everyone who will watch this back afterwards. Hopefully you've got a sense of not just how some of these packages work and some of the reports you need to produce, but actually you've been familiar with what some of these things might look like and seen some of the stats. Um, I'm sure if anyone has any questions, I'll be able to let them get in touch. And I guess the last thing to say is to thank everyone. Um, if you have an entrepreneurial idea that you haven't developed yet, we have just launched our regional startup accelerator program. Um, and at the start, Martin was talking about funding coming in. There is um, a prize pot or a funding pot of uh, £250,000 to be allocated to teams accepted. So um, it doesn't seem so far away from possible that you could end up with some funding for a business idea um, sometime soon. So you can find out about that at uh, rg.ac.uk forward slash accelerator. Um, and there's plenty more skill sessions coming up throughout the rest of the year. We've got one on Thursday um, all about how to design a website or app as well. So hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Thank you so much, Martin, for taking some time out of your day and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day.